Getting lawful permanent residence through marriage is crucial and a life-changing decision. There are so many categories for visa applications, and I understand it can get quite confusing, but it's important that you look into each option for you to know which one will work best for you. Today, we're going to talk about three secrets that a lot of aspiring green card holders don't know about the K-1 and K-3 visa, commonly known as fiancé and spousal visa. I'm Andre Major, immigration attorney and an immigrant myself. I'll be sharing helpful information so that you understand the difference between a fiancé visa and a spousal visa, and then decide the best route to take to get into the United States through one of these two. If you find the video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel and checking out our other videos. Now let's get to it. Before we jump into the three things you need to know, let's first make it clear. What is a K-1? fiancé visa or a K-3 marriage visa. Let me tell you, a K-1 visa, more commonly known as the fiancé visa, allows a U.S. citizen to bring his or her fiancé to the United States with the intent to marry and live here. If you have this visa, you'll be able to travel to the United States and you to get married within 90 days of entering the U.S. On the other hand, a K-3 visa, also known as a marriage visa or a spousal visa, is for U.S. citizens who want to bring their spouses to the U.S. Now, a spouse is defined as the legally wedded husband or wife, including same-sex spouses of U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents or green card, green card holders. Some would opt to bring their spouse to the U.S. by way of a petition for alien relative. That's form I-130. In general, processing marriage visas under this petition takes between eight and 12 months from the time the petition is filed at the USCIS service center and the time the marriage visa is issued. Now, when you get the K-3 visa route, you're supposed to speed up by half. Isn't that exciting? So to summarize, when, you, when I say K-1 visa, I mean fiance visa. And when I say K-3 visa, I'm referring to a, a marriage visa. Got it? Great. Now, on to the three things you need to know about the K-1 and K-3 visa. Secret number one, K-1 visa processing tends to move faster than a K-3 visa. The fiancé visa process takes approximately six months, and becoming a permanent resident after that takes 10 to 12 months. Then once the couple is married in the United States, they're free to stay here and immediately benefit, begin life with their new spouse. So what are we talking about? It, it takes longer to get a green card, but it takes shorter to get into the United States. That's the benefit of a K-1 visa. You get a visa to enter the United States, you then marry in the United States, and then you file for the green card in the United States. So all, all in total, it may take longer, but you're together faster. Of course, there are some requirements you need to meet for this to apply. You must have personally met each other in the last two years before filing the petition, uh, unless you were granted a waiver. Both of you must be of legal age, unmarried, and generally eligible to get legally married. You need to establish that there's a genuine relationship that both of you intend to continue in establishing their married life together. Secret number two, K-1 visa comes with more money. Although K-1 visa allows your fiance to join you in the country faster, this option also comes with a higher price tag. There are three major costs associated with the K-1 fiancé visa. Form I-129F has a filing fee of $135 plus $160 paid to the consulate. That totals $695 strictly in government fees. For the immigrant visa, there's a fee of $535 for Form I-130, $325 to the consulate for the DS-260 application, and a financial support fee of $120. Adjusting your status will cost excuse me, $1,225 for the Form I-45 fee. Therefore, total government fee, not including attorney's fees, comes between $980 and $1,760, depending on if you go through consular process or adjustment of status. Before I move on to the next point, if you're still watching, go ahead and hit the like button. 
and click the bell icon to keep yourself updated about other immigration related content. Okay, back to our topic. Secret number three, K-1 and K-3 visa holders can work and travel in the United States. Of course, there's a caveat. You have to have the necessary USAS documents. Not only are you with your fiance or spouse sooner inside the United States, but you can get them work authorization relatively quickly. With work authorization, you also get a social security number. So even if your spouse is not gonna be working, you should get it the first time to get the social. Uniting families can sometimes be problematic because of immigration issues. However, this does not mean you should give up. There are ways to address your concerns on the fiance and spouse of visas. If you learned a lot from, the video, from this video, feel free to like and share it with other people who may be thinking about getting married to their foreign loved one or bringing their foreign spouse to the United States. If you have any idea or future videos you would like me to talk about, go ahead and leave me a comment below. If you have questions, you wanna talk about your case or your journey, give us a call and we'll let you know when and how we can help. Remember, every case is different and we won't take your money if we can't help you. Until next time, stay healthy and be well. Uh -huh.